Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to 7.1, 7.2. We're going to do 7.1a, Exploring Exponential Models and Properties. Wabbit time. A population of 12 wabbit doubles every year, so we need to find the population of the wabbit in years 0 through 4 and find the populations in the nth year. In other words, what's happening if I wanted to go 20 years down the line? So if it's doubling each year, in year 0, we have 12. So 12 equals 12. After the first year, it's supposed to have doubled. So double 12, and we get 24. Okay. After two years, now we're going to double again each year. So 24 now doubles to 48. If we double in the third year, now we become 96. And if we double that fourth year, we now get 192. And, well, we don't know, so we got to figure out, well, what's actually happening? So if we started with 12, how do we get from 12 to 24? Well, we doubled it, or double means 2 times by 2. And the next year, we're doubling that, so if we double 24, it's the same as going 12 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the second. In the third year, we're going to double again. Well, by doubling, we mean one, two, three times. So if we remember, repeated multiplication is exponential. So now we're repeating the doubling three times. So this is 12 times 2 to the third. So the, to get 192, we're going to go 12 times 2 to the fourth. So if I said n, meaning if I wanted to know in the 100th year, or the 200th year, or the 50th year, we're going to go 12 times 2 to the whatever year we're looking for. So this is to the n. So this expression that we get, this 12 times 2 to the n, this is called an exponential expression. Because the exponent n is a variable, and the base 2 is some fixed number. Okay? In other words, that 2 could really be a 3, really could be a 4. So if it were a 3, we're tripling the wabbit each time. If it's 4th, we're quadrupling the base. So the base 2 then is called the multiplier. Now with repeated multiplication with exponential, we can use this equation. Y equals A times B to the X. Where A is your initial amount. Okay, B is going to be that multiplier that is raised to some exponential. Okay, to, so to determine the multiplier when given a, a percent, we look at exponential growth. So things can grow over time. If it were a graph, as we go from left to right, we're going to increase our function. Exponential decay is going to, as we go from left to right, decay or decrease. Okay. So we basically are adding the growth rate to 100%. And if it's exponential decay, we are subtracting the growth rate. You see this in bacteria multiplying over time. You see this as your check at a restaurant increasing by percentage or tax and so forth. You see this as investing money and after some amount of time, you see more money in the bank, hopefully. So examples. If we need to find the multiplier of the following, okay, we have 7% growth. So we have 100%, but we have growth, so we know we're going to increase by 7%, which means that increase by 7% now becomes 107, or if we actually we need to change it to a decimal, it's 1.07. If we do decay on B, we're now, now going to decrease. That means 100% is going to decrease down. So it's going to decrease or minus 6%, which now means now we have 94% or 0.94. Hit pause quickly. Try C and D. All right, for C, 1.5% growth, be careful, should be 101.5% or 1.015, 8.2% percent decay is 91.8 percent or 0.918. Okay. So some calculator functions. What we can do, we need to compute these to three decimal places. We're going to take 42 times 2 to the x minus 1. We're going to plug in two-thirds. So if I look at my handy dandy calculator, okay, we already have the function up here. 42 times 2 raised to the two-thirds minus 1. Be careful because if you do end up putting in 0.66 it's not rounded correctly, 0.67, not rounded correctly. Two-thirds carries on 0.66666666666. So, if we hit enter, we get 
0.335. B, if we have 0 0.8 raised to the 3 times 3.4, we have this on the calculator. 0.103 rounded, or 0 0.103. So just some quick calculator practice. Applications. Okay, we have a t equals a times 1 plus r to the t. Really, this is exactly what we just used. y equals a times b raised to the x power. So if we look at the initial population of bacteria in a lab test is 400. Okay, and the bacteria doubles again. So our multiplier is going to be 2. Okay, so we need to predict the population at the end of three hours. If it doubles every hour, okay, we need to know, well, what are we starting off with? So we know that that A term is kind of where we're going to start. So we're taking the 400 in the bacteria. It's doubling each hour. Well, how many hours are we going to double it? We're going to double it three. So we'll raise this to the third power, and you end up getting 3,200 bacteria. Okay. See if we want to predict a bacteria at the end of five hours. Well, we start with 400, we are doubling again, and this time after 5 hours, raise it to the 5th power. Hit your calculator button, you should have 12,800 bacteria. Go ahead, hit pause. Try number 2. See you in uh, f about 45 seconds. Go. Welcome back. Hey, it's blank. Just checking with you. One thing you got to notice, it's doubling every 30 minutes. Okay, so if it's doubling every 30 minutes, we have to be careful. So we know we're going to start with 400 bacteria. Okay, we know it's doubling, but we want the end, end of three hours. So let's go back. How much is it changing every hour? Well, it's going to change twice. Well, if it changes twice every hour, then we're going to have to multiply two times the three, and that's going to give us six. So it's going to be raised to the six power. Raise that to the six power you should have gotten 25,600 bacteria. So predicted at the end of five hours now, well, if it's doubling every 30 minutes, we should get more. We're going to double. Let's take the, again, two times the five this time. We're going to raise this to the 10th power, and it's 409,600 bacteria. All right, number three. A certain medicine is eliminated from the bloodstream at a rate of 18% every minute. Hint, exponential growth. Okay, so as soon as we see this word eliminated, we got to think you are losing amounts. So you're not going to have that 100% uh, medicine within your bloodstream at a certain time. So we're going to decrease. So we have to think, well, we're going to start with 100%, and we're decreasing 18%, which means we retain 82% left every minute. So it changed the 82% to a decimal, so it's 0.82. So if we have 60 milligrams of medicine in the bloodstream, okay, that's where we're starting with. So we have 60 milligrams here. Predict the amount of medicine remaining after 20 minutes. Well, what's the multiplier? The multiplier is how much we're retaining after every minute, so that's our 0.82. Okay? And it's, it's losing at a rate of 18% every minute, so one minute times the 20 minutes means we're going to raise this to 20. Okay, punch in your calculator, and you should get 1.134 milligrams. Number four. Okay, suppose you invest $200 into an account that earns 6.5% interest, compounded annually. Okay, growth of today. Well, if I'm investing money, and it's earning percentage interest, uh, I'm hopefully after that uh, each year, I should have a, a larger amount. So the multiplier. The multiplier, we're taking 100% and we're adding the 6.5%, which is going to give us that 106.5%. Be careful. Move the decimal, please. We're going to get 1.065. So this is a growth. So write an expression that will predict the balance in the account after T years. Well, what do we start with? Well, we started with $200. What's the multiplier? Multiplier is that 100% or 1.065 raised to the how many years that we're going to do this? Well, raised to the T. So if we need to find the balance at the end of seven years, we're just going to take this seven and we're going to input it in there. So we're going to go 200 
times 1.065 raised to the seventh, which gives us $310.80. So, after seven years, you won $200 for Baby of the Year. Congratulations. So you, your, your parents, family, puts this in a bank, and it uh, just sits there for seven years. So by the time you turn seven, you now have $310.80. D, when is the balance at least $1,000? So what we need to do is we need to set up an equation. Okay. We need to figure out, well, when is this equal to 1,000? So I go, okay, well, if I have 1,000, and I know, quick erase, 200, 1.065 raised to the T, Okay, I want those to be equal to. In other words, I want to know how long is it going to take me for to get $1,000. Let's say you want to buy a car, and the car costs you. The one that you want is $1,000. Well, here's our equation that we started with. we got to figure out, well, how long is it going to take us to gain that money? Well, we can do this graphically. Real quick, on if you have a graphing calculator, we can say, okay, well, Y1 is 1.065. Call that X or T. Okay, and then we have... Five. And the way I got this is, if I'm going to make this a little simpler, I'm going to divide by 200, divide by 200, so we get 1.065 to the t equals 5. Okay. So I'm going to set this equal to this equation, if they're both y. By doing this, if we go to our handy dandy calculator, by hitting y equals, so I entered in a y1 function, we have 1.065 raised to the x, and another function we have y equals 5. When I graph this, okay, we get these two lines. So the horizontal line is that y equals 5, and the other one is the exponential growth. We need to figure out, well, when are these equal? They're equal to at this intersection. So if I find the intersection by calculation, we get x equals 25.557, comma, 5. In that 5, y equals 5, and that's x. So x comma 5, so x equals approximately 26 years. So what this means is the balance will be at least $1,000 after approximately 26 years. That's one way of solving. Congratulations! Do your best, forget the rest. Bye for now.